Welcome to Catsback Watches. My name is Tim and in this episode I'd like to combine the topics Muammar al-Gaddafi, Rolex and the question is Western media controlled? And if you find this mixture a little bit quirky, okay, maybe it is, but I think there is a clear connection. So follow me, please, I will show you this connection. And I'm still under the influence of the book, The Dictator's Handbook, recommended in another video, Dictator's Handbook. And the Amazon Analytics showed me that some viewers actually have bought this book. And now I'm really concerned, <laughs> maybe I'm responsible for the next dictator. This would be awful. I mean, imagine the world 2050 and there's this really nasty character and his country is terror and hell on earth. His pockets are loaded and the journalist then asks him, about his beginning and then he claims well I was a subscriber of this YouTube channel Caseback Watches and this guy his name was I don't know Fred Hans I don't know Tim maybe he recommended the dictator's handbook and with this thing I've learned my craft to perfection and now I'm in power my country is hell on earth and <laughs> I'm filthy rich and so I really hope this is not the case but still under the influence of this great book um, I've noticed that uh, there are so many watches around on auctions or on the Houdinki platform owned by dictators. And the first aspect here I want to discuss is the value of such a piece. Because I've noticed there are first there are so many, especially Muammar al-Gaddafi was a big client of Rolex and he gave several watches to his, yeah, his cronies. And I think we can see those watches as bribes to his cronies. And Rolex, of course, because he wanted a recognizable piece. And so if given this Daytona to a crony, the De Daytona is now on the Houdinki's website, because then the crony could see, oh, this is a Rolex Daytona. This is very valuable. This is my guy here. And then I've noticed that there are huge differences between dictators. I mean, the watch, what was this? Oh, a dictator? No, some sort of weather phenomenon. The watches owned by Saddam Hussein, for example, are cheap junk. And the watches from Gaddafi are very valuable. He has this green Patek from the 70s was very, very expensive on an auction. And his Daytona obviously is very expensive. Houdinki has it. And so my question is, why are those differences in price? And I think the explanation is very simple. Um, I really mean this, very simple. It's the look of the dictator. Um, there are some people who consider Gaddafi in a way cool. And I think this is because in his early days, he was a good looking character, good looking man. And in his later days, he evolved this style with this crazy wardrobe. He looked sometimes more like a rock star from the US West Coast than a dictator from the Middle East. And I found even a crazy website where you can buy Gaddafi commemorate watches with his face on the dial. I mean, who, who wants to buy such a watch? Very strange, but it shows clearly that there is something with Gaddafi, which some sort of people like actually. And so those huge prices. Okay, and now to the next topic. Every time I mention Gaddafi here on the channel, I think I've mentioned him once, <laughs> to, be, to be frank, there's a little debate in the comments if he was rather a good person, helped his people, or a ruthless dictator. And I mean, the evidence is pretty clear that he was a ruthless dictator because testified by, by many witnesses, he was a rapist, murderer, and something beyond it. But people then state in the comments, no, fake news by controlled Western media. And I'm a journalist myself, from my, my day job is journalism. But local news, if the road is blocked, then I write the road is blocked. And if the harbor wants more money, then I write harbor wants more money, some sort of that. But I know many journalists um, who work for big publishers, who for big companies, for big TV stations. And I've made some very interesting observations there. But first, let's define the subject. What is Western controlled media or controlled Western media? I mean, to be frank, nobody knows what Western media is, but let's put this beside. What's controlled by whom? First, the government, of course, the government has an interest to control media. We see this all the time. Second, a conspiracy of, let's say, left intellectuals. This is stated very often. And a third, some sort of evil conspiracy run by banks, by big bank houses, by big, by, by big finance. And so those are our, our three controllers here, our three alleged con con controllers. And now to my observation about journalism and journalists. They cannot agree on shit. Excuse my language, but it's exactly like that. They cannot agree what kind of present they should order for a dear colleague. They cannot agree on which pizza they order. They cannot agree on big topics, they cannot agree on small topics. And so my observation is the idea that you could, that you could, th this bunch of individuals 
that you could control them is beyond crazy. It's beyond, it is ridiculous. But let's assume somebody tries it. Let's just, let's assume somebody tries it. Let's assume that, yeah, I'm the dictator. I'm the controller now. I want to control Western media. But let's, let's narrow it a little bit down. Let's speak about German media because Germany is one of the biggest countries in, in, in Europe and has some of the biggest publishers in Europe. So let's about, speak about German media and let's find out if German media is controlled. And I have a very popular and big newspaper, high value target for a conspiracy. This is a weekly newspaper, one of the biggest in Europe called Die Zeit, which is you can translate in The Times. And it's one of the few newspapers, print, uh, which makes serious money with it, which has growth. And the controller here noticed something very weird and unpleasant and it's that in the in the department politics sometimes they write we should raise that tax we need it for our economy and then in the in the economy part they write we don't need this tax this tax will ruin our lives and so they cannot agree if the tax is good or bad between those departments and of course this is a severe problem for me as the controller because I want to control now this high value target here. But I've noticed something something else. I came across an article, came across an article in this edition. If you want to look it up, 16th in January 2020. An article about um, are we more tolerant with left radicals than with right radicals? I mean, this is an important question, right? Um, if you have a radicalism is close to terrorism, I think, and you have a police force, one police force, you have one budget and you should spend the budget wisely. And if you tell the police, hunt down the right radicals, then, and, and the problem is on the left, then you have a huge problem next year, terrible situation. But let's put this beside. Let's see me here as the controller. And of course, then I'm the left uh, intellectual. And so I want that the right radicals are the bad guys, right? I want my damn newspaper to state that the right radicals are the bad guys. And you know what they, they've done now? They've written two articles, yes and no. They couldn't agree. They couldn't agree on the question if we are tolerant with left or right. And here he says, no, we're not. I mean, what kind of control this is? This control went badly, really badly. And in the same edition, in the same edition, now it gets worse, Brexit. I mean, a controlled newspaper, controlled by me, the, the left intellectual, as they say, should report only bad things about the Brexit. It's the, yeah, it's all evil with the Brexit. And now you have here in the politic part, I mean, see that? I'm a Brexiteer. Last sentence is, democracy has prevailed. This thing is entirely pro-Brexit in my controlled newspaper. I mean, um, if I was here really the controller, then this operation failed badly. There is nothing control in it. They cannot agree on, as I said, shit. By the way, I'm not saying here that there are no controlled newspapers or TV stations. That's not the case. But the idea that several thousand people on those stations, in those stations, in those, in those, in those newspapers can agree to a conspiracy um, without a whistleblower is um, not possible. It's not very likely nowadays, right? I mean, even Google has a huge problem with, with, with some sort of rebellion because Google employees now don't like some decisions of their board of CEOs. And now they make some steam there. Even Google cannot, cannot be controlled. So I think the, the idea of Western controlled media, to put it short, is ludicrous. It's ridiculous. But I have one question now. If I can find out that Western media is not controlled or at least German media, the center of German media is not controlled. So easy, it was so easy. Why people um, keep stating this? And I think it's so easy. It's so easy. You don't like an idea. You don't like an opinion. You don't like an assumption. You name it. You don't like something. And then you say, controlled media. Those are all fake news by controlled media. Hmm. And you now you can say, okay, let them mumble this. It's not very important for us, but um, it distracts us from a very dangerous fact. And the fact is that there is a form of controlled media. You are in it right now. Social media. Social media is nowadays highly controlled by algorithms. And this, of course, is a huge problem. If an algorithm shows you a part of the reality, only a part, then this is a huge problem. And especially if you see um, certain countries 
where the internet is social media. There are countries out there, everybody has the, the Facebook app and nothing else. People think then Facebook is social media, is media, is news. One day I've looked for detail from a uniform I want to copy, I think a pocket was. And I typed in uniform on the Pinterest website and it took me six weeks to get out of this spam cloud of World War II stuff. I'm not a World War II fan, I just wanted to see something from the uniform. Or if you, on Facebook, if you write something which is slightly on the right side of the spectrum or slightly on the left side, doesn't matter for this case, then the algorithm feeds you with right or left and feeds you merciless with right or left. He shows you everything you want to see, but nothing beside it. So algorithm as the first controller of social media. Second controller are some kids in Manila, Philippines. There is a marvelous documentary out there called The Cleaners. And they filmed there some younger, younger people who are censors for social media, for Google, for Facebook, for Instagram, and so on and so on. And excuse my language again, those kids there don't know shit about politics, about history, about context. Every kid there has to control, has to censor 25,000 images a day. 25,000 images and they film there how they do this. For instance, there is this, this um, very, very famous picture from the Vietnam War. This little girl, you have seen it, running a street together with GIs and cameramen. And this image has changed human history, right? And there you see the, the kid in Manila. Um, this is an old picture. The girl is nude, has to be deleted, cannot be shown on social media. Bomb. So this, in my eyes, is the real problem controlled social media and not necessarily though those newspapers from Germany or from England or the United States. Again, I'm not saying that there is no controlled newspaper or TV station, but overall the probability that entire Western media is controlled is zero. And the way out of this is very simple, but uh, sometimes painful and not exactly fun. You have to consume more than one type of media. And of course this is not fun. I mean, if I read a newspaper and I cannot agree, then you think every sentence, no, this is bullshit. But I think it's important, and I want to go further, I would think it's, yeah, it's a duty for, for people like me and like you to consume more than one type of media because it changes our view of the world. And so my suggestion is you could start with the documentary The Cleaners, be careful with it, contains extremely violent pictures, and so don't watch this with, with kids in a room. Okay, and that's all I want to say about that topic. Thank you very much for your tolerance to follow me through those topics. I know this is a watch channel and style channel and those related topics, but when I see something like that, which I consider really important, I don't want to continue, just continue with the best 10 summer watches under $1,000. It would be, would be not suitable in my eyes. And so if you liked the video, please consider subscribing. It's a big encouraging for me. And now let me thank you very much for your attention and maybe until next time.